Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to today's Monday night episode of CU at USC. My name is Dan Toomey, and joining me tonight will be representatives from the Chalk Repertory Theater here in Los Angeles talking about their upcoming Flash Festival. Be sure to join us. It's going to be a fantastic interview. And welcome once again to the most important event on television tonight. Uh, here joining me is one of the co-founders of the Chalk Repertory That's Theater, right. Miss Larissa Kokono. How are you tonight? I'm great. Thank, Thank you, you so much for joining us. Thank you. And so um, earlier today, we were talking about uh, the, the founders of the Chalk Repertory Theater. For those who might not be familiar with it at home, uh, just, just a brief history of, of the Repertory Theater to begin with, if you wouldn't mind. So Chalk was founded in 2008, mm -hmm. <laughs> the year my second son was born. Uh, as um, it was a colleague, a bunch of colleagues that had come together from UCSD. Mm -hmm. We had all been doing our graduate work in theater mm -hmm. done at UCSD. Yeah. And uh, we had all been living in Los Angeles for about two years. Oh, okay. Yeah. And we're finding ourselves hungry for a kind of theater that we weren't seeing hmm. around. Uh, a lot of theater of our size was happening in small black box spaces. Mm -hmm. And we felt like it was time to break some of that open. Yeah. So uh, we just we, we started with the idea of taking theater outside the theater, outside mm, the black okay. box, yeah. or erasing the stage, mm -hmm. and um, and really we're interested in a combination of producing both classical work, so like a Shakespeare, yeah. or Chekhov, yeah. or something like that, but also. Um, because they're such, Los Angeles is so rich with writers, mm, yeah. really bringing in new writers to write material for spaces that are not theaters. Yeah. So looking for um, writers that vibe with us, but also looking for plays that may be already out there and mm. it might be broken open yeah. by not being in a traditional theater space. Yeah. Um, we also had some other parts that were really key for us in the mission of our company we wanted our artists that were making theater that were on stage to be reflective of what the diversity of Los Angeles. Mm, so oh, okay, in doing yeah. Shakespeare or Chekhov, we were not, it was not a lot of white faces. It yeah. was a mixture. The city and is a, breathing through the art. Exactly, um, yeah. and it felt really important to do that. Mm -hmm. And another huge part of the mission uh, was about putting money into people over stuff, mm. which was uh, in line with this idea of not doing it in theater. Mm -hmm. So we don't have any rental costs. We're really? not hiring, we're not getting big like light sets yeah. or sound things. Yeah, you guys are just nomads. I There's guess. no <laughs> sets. We are yeah. total nomads, <laughs> exactly. So that was really where it came from. And mm -hmm. our first production was at Hollywood Forever Cemetery. Really? What was that? In their recently renovated Masonic Lodge. And we did a production of Three Sisters. Really? Yeah, with the Prozorov family, or mm -hmm. the sisters, as an Asian family. Uh, oh, okay. And then yeah. the the rest of the cast was also a total mm -hmm. wonderful mix. Yeah, and and uh, that's funny because I think that's something that people are starting to address now in the theater community, talking about diversity. But you guys were doing that in two thousand eight. We like to say that. We like to say when it everybody <laughs> is like, oh, fifty percent, fifty percent. was like, what about us? Yeah, was it like We've when, when Hamilton came out? Like, where you're just like, yeah. that stole our idea. <laughs> no, we're like, yes, that's <laughs> the way it should be going. Thank you, Hamilton, for yeah. really putting it on the map. Because chalk, you know, is still in our own little. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sweet corner. Mm -hmm. We're nestling. And, and let's let's talk about this upcoming festival for a second. Yeah. Um, so October sixth is the is yeah, the opening the first, date. Yep. Thursday um, night. Going to be at St. John's. St. John's um, Cathedral, right yeah. down the block. So you so easy USC for students, USC students. You have no excuse. Yeah. If I if I don't see them there, I'll be you sure can to walk make a list right of over. some sort. Yeah. Yeah. So easy. And and so so elaborate upon the festival a little bit. Where um where did it first begin? I guess because it's unique. It's it's only ten it's only ten minute shows. Yeah. Um and it's by fifteen different writers. Yep. And a specific theme each year. Where did this idea first come about? You know, the, uh, the, the theme thing is interesting. There is definitely a theme this year, but the theme is usually largely determined by space. Really? So usually we find a space that we think has the potential. Oh, and then you and build then the theme, the theme. Off of that. It just so happened our space this year was St. John's Cathedral and 
it's mm. election time. Yeah. <laughs> so it felt oh, like we needed to combine the, <laughs> those two things you don't talk around the dinner table. Mm -hmm. So it was very thematically yeah. driven this year. Um, but our first, our very first Flash Festival was also, interestingly enough, at a church um, that was up in Los Feliz in an old church, oh, like okay. a 1920s beautiful church. Mm -hmm. And uh, the idea is with a Flash um, Festival is that you have to have a space that has a lot of different spaces within it. Mm -hmm. Because often the plays are happening simultaneously throughout mm. the space and the audience kind of goes on a huh, journey throughout really? the evening where they see all the all the shorter spaces. Mm -hmm. So the audience isn't necessarily all together. That's interesting. You're often broken into smaller groups because it makes the experience more I intimate and immediate. Yeah. And sometimes you're in very small rooms. Mm -hmm. So the last time we produced a huh. Flash Festival, we were at 8th and Hope, which was a brand new high-rise building that was downtown. Mm -hmm. And many of the pieces took place in apartments, you know, that were oh, the model so apartments. So you're not you're not you're not taking a play and performing it in one room. You're used, you're utilizing the whole space. Yes, and the audience That's is going funny. through kind of a journey and seeing a lot of different plays. Yeah. But the idea you asked from the beginning, what where did it come from? Mm -hmm. And a lot of it had to do with um, us sitting around a table and trying to figure out how we could get more artists in the mix. Mm. Basically, you know, we wanted to invite more writers and yeah. more directors, more actors. And we also wanted to see who uh, the artists out in Los Angeles who vibed with this idea of doing sites, more site specific yeah. work or unconventional mm -hmm. work. So we like to sometimes think of it almost like speed dating with yeah. artists <laughs> because it's yeah. like it's such a short, you do everything yeah. in a week. You mm -hmm. know, you've got 10 hours of rehearsal, you're up in the space, it's up for a mm -hmm. weekend only, and then you're done. Yeah. So it, be what it became a wonderful way for us to engage with a lot of different artists and kind of open up our community and also have audiences have this amazing experience of spaces that they either knew or didn't know mm -hmm. in their community and really see them in a whole new way. Yeah, so. and, 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 and talk about that a little bit in terms of how space can, can affect a story because in theater, um, a lot of the times we see not only the, the characters aren't only interacting with each other, but the spaces around them. Right. And how, because uh, I, I guess that's what Chalk Repertory Theater and and this festival is based off of. Just uh, elaborate upon that a little bit, the relationship uh, between character and space and how what you're doing can drastically change a story. Yeah, I, I, I want to go back to uh, one of the things, one of the seeds was a production that I actually did before Chalk was even founded, mm -hmm. where uh, we staged a play in people's living rooms, and we actually really? had the audience moving between living rooms and kitchens in the space. So mm -hmm. while you're asking a question about what it does to the work, it's also uh, what it does to the audience to mm. be in a yeah. different kind of configuration mm -hmm. where light, the lights aren't necessarily going down on you, where you might sit, be sitting on a piece of furniture like you may be the actor and an audience person is like right here. Mm -hmm. And what that does in terms of the w how it changes the way you connect to the work. Mm -hmm. So it really does, I, s I sometimes say that it almost creates the possibility for a hybrid between film and television because you're putting yeah. people in a real space and they're all in that space yeah. together yeah. but then what is required from the actors nobody's cutting nobody's there's no editing there's process. no fourth wall right exactly yeah. there it's all happening in that moment mm -hmm. so they're creating their arcs and they're and you know it has a traditional rehearsal process mm -hmm. but I also think it can really break open the work yeah especially plays that um, people are really familiar with that they've maybe seen mm -hmm. a lot of you times gotta switch it up a little exactly bit. Yeah. to put it in a space in a in a space that kind of breaks open their mm -hmm. notion can kind of crack open the play thematically yeah. as yeah. well so, so. A any 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 um, I guess most notable plays or stories that you have of like oh we did this show in this space that <laughs> they was all are kind of like that really? they really do yeah so there were a few years ago um, we did a production of a play that actually grew out of a flash festival play it was a play called mom Yoon, mm -hmm. and it was about basically a place that mothers who had in this kind of new world order digressed in some way, done something wrong, let their kid play alone for too many hours or whatever, and were brought into the, uh, basically a re rehab center oh, okay, for yeah. moms. But we performed it at a children's play space in Sherman Oaks. Huh. So that people would enter the space and kind of be in this children's play space yeah. and be taken in for like a workshop about how to be good mm -hmm. parents, but then see behind the scenes what was going on mm -hmm. in this, but all in this yeah. space that nobody would ever yeah. think of as like Handmaid's Tale revisited. Yeah, and, and I bet like 
you probably find out so much about a work just performing it somewhere else. Yes, Do you, have, you, have you found that to be the yes, case? Yes, there's a lot of insights that you get when you're not build when instead of building a set mm -hmm. to match your vision you're inside a space and you're like okay what's the story and how does it fit into the space how can i use this space yeah. to open up this story yeah mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. revelation lots and of that exactly and we talked about uh the theme earlier of yep. of religion um <laughs> was that and politics and, and politics and politics <laughs> cannot forget politics cannot especially forget not right tonight <laughs> although if you're watching this thank you're, you for forgetting about politics yeah. but um what so I know the space comes first. Yeah. Is it more of like you you look around different options in Los Angeles and see oh we can get that what can we usually, build usually of usually we've had some connection with the space prior mm -hmm. to deciding that's a good space for Flash. Yeah. Um, and then in, and then we'll usually reach out to the space and say hey we have this idea of using your space we have this partnership already mm -hmm. um, we would like to you know, use your space in this way. So it's very often kind of this interesting, like we've already gotten the ball rolling in yeah. some way, and we feel like it has the potential, like I said, for multiple different experiences to happen in the same space. Hmm. So there will be five different yeah. sites on, each, going on, on each night that you go, and then if you go the next weekend, mm. you'll see five new plays, but in those same really? rooms with the or same, actors, same spaces. Correct? Nope, different, different actors, actors every weekend. So wow. we cast. So it's, it's a completely based on the different needs, experience. It's a you're completely going. different experience. Huh. Yeah. So, and, and so that so once again That's for USC weekend. students, yes. that doesn't mean you can go one week and you have the whole experience. Yeah, that no, means you, you go, go to multiple week. weekends, and it's fun because you go back and you you've been you know, in some little room or whatever, yeah. and then and then you're back in that same room and what's happening in that room is now totally different. Yeah, and and you, and you get the sampler in that, all these plays are, are 10 minutes, right? Yeah, so. we, I mean, we're really holding <laughs> writers. <laughs> is that, in is the that, past, is that, is that it's grown from, time? well, in the past it's grown <laughs> from like 10 minutes to sometimes a half an hour. Oh, really? like people. <laughs> I remember the first time we performed, there was one piece famously that was in like a room with no airflow. Mm -hmm. And it ended up being a half an hour long, and everybody no was perfect flow? actually for the piece. Oh, yeah? But literally everybody in the audience is sweating just as much as the two <laughs> characters who are in like a, you know, a standoff. <laughs> yeah, they can totally feel yeah. the tension. And yeah. and just before we break to commercial, what can people do to support the Chalk Repertory Theater at home? Well, come see theater. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like that's. I mean, whether you hear, you can come see the Flash Festival. Please mm -hmm. do. That's wonderful. But actually, just go to theater. That's a yeah. that's a huge support part of it. Support your local community Sup theater. Yeah, support your local community theater. Because it does theater. need to, it does need to be supported by the community. It does, but. and and it really is about inviting people into a space. That's yeah. what Flash is about, kind of invitation and making it so it doesn't feel so formalized mm -hmm. and so like we have to sit here quietly. A lot of them have direct audience interaction, a mm -hmm. lot of the pieces. So it's really about coming and allowing yourself to kind of cross over into a territory of thinking. Oh, this isn't what I thought theater was, and yet it it is. Yeah, and, and you found that brain you you have brought people from different who might not be theater people into this new Absolutely. experience. Absolutely, we like to we like to change the idea of what theater can mm -hmm. be for for people who have one concept that it's yeah. about sitting in a proscenium space looking at a stage. Yeah, and now know. it's and now it's immersive. Yeah, right, now it's and they get the full. You experience yeah well it's, yeah. it sounds like it's gonna be an exciting three weeks ahead it of us it should be yeah it should be yes good. and and we do have um two of the playwrights coming up very yes. soon are you excited and for they're, those they're fantastic both really fantastic writers we've yeah. been advised that that's week two that's a very important week <laughs> for the shows so if you can't if you can't make the first one week no two. you have to make the first one i don't know <laughs> where I make the first one <laughs> yeah and um just as, as, a, as a quick, uh, what is the special discount that students can get? Really There's fast? a great, uh, if you go to our website, which is chalkrep.com, very easy mm -hmm. to remember, chalk like sidewalk chalk, mm -hmm. and you go to buy tickets, you can just enter in chalk student for $15 seats. F only $15? Only $15. And so students really at this point have, have no, no excuse. excuse. Not only that, I think if you, if, you have if you bring a program from a previous week, we've always given a $5 discount on subsequent. Really? Really? Yes. And you guys perform every week? Yes. Really? Yes. Three weekends in a row. Six, the sixth, October sixth through the twenty second. And so, if you if you stay consistent with it, they'll remember you. Yes, exactly. That's great. Yeah. And um, and and any other shows surrounding this time at all? Uh, not with chalk. Our next thing will we have some workshops and other things coming up, um, new plays that mm -hmm. we're working on and developing. But this is our, our this is our big fall push. Cool. Yeah. yeah. And so, so a lot of exciting things coming up for you guys, right? Yes, a lot of exciting things. That's interesting. Yeah.
And um, any 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 specific projects in mind that you want? Yeah, we're in um, a project that we've been really excited about for a long time is um, August Wilson's Seven Guitars, which we are actually is being rehearsed as we speak right now elsewhere for a workshop reading that's really? coming up. Yeah. Well, for a production next year. And well, with that little preview, we're going to hear from two of the playwrights right after this commercial break. Stick with us. Larissa, thank you so much again. Pleasure. Thank you. And welcome back. Thank you very much for sticking with us here. Uh, my name is Dan Toomey once again for this Monday night episode of CU at USC. And we have two of the writers from the Chalk Repertory Theater who will be represented in the Flash Festival this week. Gentlemen, uh, thank you one, thank you so Absolutely. much for joining us. If you wouldn't yeah, mind right just on. quickly introducing yourselves to the audience at home and uh, what your relationship is with uh, both Chalk and the festival coming up. Um, I'm Eric reyes -Liu. I am actually a new artistic circle member at Chalk. Really? So I just joined um, the group. They asked me to mm -hmm. become a part of the program. I've been involved with their writers group mm -hmm. for about a year and a half. And um, I've been part of Flash Festival as an attendee. Like I've never participated. Mm -hmm. So this is my first year doing it, um, but I'm really excited about it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my name is Brian Polak, and uh, I actually met um, Larissa Kokerno, who was one of the founders of Chalk Rep, who you just interviewed yes. a couple minutes ago. I met her here at USC where she, when she was hired to uh, direct a play that I wrote while I was a grad student here. And then later, uh, the year after I graduated, I was invited to participate in the previous Flash Festival, which took place mm. at Ethan Hope downtown. So this, yeah. is the, this year is my second time yeah. participating in the festival. Yeah. And um, and something that that Larissa and I talked about earlier, um, we kind of mentioned the constraint of ten minutes. Right. And coming from the perspective of playwrights, especially when you're given um, the umbrella ter uh, umbrella topic of religion and politics, how do you how do you consolidate that into a ten minute story? Um, for me, it's sort of, I mean, it is a bit of a challenge, you know. Mm -hmm. And and so I wanted to take a situation that was sort of contained. So my play is about a very awkward, inappropriate first date. Really? To a church mm -hmm. where a guy brings a picnic basket and decides <laughs> to have this sort of picnic oh. on an altar. On an altar. And okay. so I figured, okay, that's kind of interesting. And yeah. I was, I think the thing that made me the most nervous though was kind of trying to fit in 
the themes mm. of you know religion and politics without being too heavy handed, but also yeah. trying yeah. to tell. It's, it's such a heavy issue to Absolutely. begin with. Absolutely, both yeah. of them. It's just one of them would be mm -hmm. crazy, but mm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And Brian. Yeah, I wanted to write about something that was uh, part of the happening in our culture right now, and I ended up writing a play that was inspired by the shooting of Tamir Rice in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that's a huge, you know, it's a huge topic. Gigantic, uh, yeah. The Black Lives Matter movement is, is enormous and it's, uh, it's hard to tackle such a, uh, a broad topic. So I, uh, especially, you know, in 10 minutes. Mm. So I tried to narrow the focus as much as I could by just having uh, two people in the room talking about essentially the, you know, their relationship to the shooting. So I fictionalized um, uh, a situation which is essentially the, it takes place just after the funeral of a young boy who was shot. Oh. And it is uh, the mother of that young boy and one of the police officers who were on the scene uh, uh, at the shooting. And they had a, they, they knew each other. So the, the, the police officer in my fictionalized version of the story um, knew the boy who was shot. Mm. He was a, a close friend of the family. So to keep it into ten minutes, I narrowed the focus as as tightly as I as I could. Yeah, and and as as um, as writers for something as unique as chalk, the form, it, it, you know, it being in a different space. And um, do you write the play specifically for chalk? And and if so. Um, do you write it with a certain place in mind? Do you say, okay, I know that this would work better being performed here rather than the stage? Well, what they did was that they kind of took us through. What was really great was they we actually went on a tour of really? St. John's. Oh, okay. So that we could kind of look at um, different spaces and see mm -hmm. what we responded to. Yeah. So, um, so you actually are writing for the space. That's funny. And um, but I think when I was writing, it's I kind of started forgetting about what the space was and mm -hmm. really focusing in on the characters. And we just did a, um, I just had it read in our writers group this weekend, and mm -hmm. my director and I kind of walked through the space and we really spoke about mm -hmm. how do we, um, how do we address the vocabulary of the space? Mm -hmm. Like this is a very sacred space and a very inappropriate thing or non-sacred mm -hmm. thing is happening in that, in that yeah. space. So what's the relationship mm -hmm. between the space and the subject matter? Yeah. Would you, would you agree? Yeah, it is actually a really interesting experience. We don't write these, we don't, these aren't pre-written plays uh, that we're bringing into these spaces. We are really letting the, the space, in, in my words, sort of speak to us. Uh, that's sort of how it is for me. You walk around the, these different rooms at, at a cathedral like St. John's on the mm -hmm. street and First of all, it was just kind of um, oddly inspiring just being in an empty uh, church and to walk around and get up close to these these places that I've never, like, uh, you go on the altar, like, touch the altar and be near. Really get get a feel of what. And then walk behind the altar like this, you know, uh, I would go to church when I was a, a young child uh, and just, you know, this, this would be this weird place, like, hundreds of feet away. And to all these years later, be able to walk up and 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 see what yeah. the priest would see, and then look at it from the perspective mm -hmm. of the priest out into the the pews and the congregation. It was really, um, really inspiring. Hmm. Yeah. So anyway, uh, point being, I kind of let the space determine what it sort of what stores sort of story wants to be told inside it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this is and this is uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but is this the first time you have both written for for for, for um, Flash and Chalk, or have you been doing the festival before? This is my first time. My second time. Okay. And what what was the first time like for you? Did you is it a challenge as a writer facing this kind of task? Yeah. Well, the first the first time um, I ended up deciding to write about something that was happening in my life personally around that time. Mm -hmm. So I wrote about um, the death of my father, mm -hmm. and I wrote uh, a short ten minute play. So again, I tried to narrow the focus down as much as I could, and I had a brother and sister in an apartment where their father is in the bedroom on the other side of the door, you never end up seeing him um, essentially dying. Mm. And the brother and sister have come to this uh, place because they need to say goodbye to their estranged father. They hadn't seen him in a very long time and he is dying, so they are trying to come to terms with the loss of this man who they've been estranged from for many years. Mm -hmm. And that was sort of my experience when my father had passed just a couple months uh, before that Flash Festival a few years ago. Mm -hmm. So I tried to make it a piece that really needed to be in an apartment. And then you had the audience 
scattered around this entire apartment with these two actors just, um, you know, living and breathing all around them. And so you find when you're exploring a space and really in depth exploring it, it doesn't only pull out a, a plot from your mind, but it kind of pulls out something from you. Would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's sort of, um, because w we're so used to, when you have the separation of, a the you know, when you're in a theater, it's like, no one can hear you. Exactly. It's sort of, you have yeah. that fourth wall. Mm -hmm. And so when you have this immersive experience, mm -hmm. I think it, yeah, it does evoke, it does feel in a way more real, like it's happening in actual yeah. real time. Yeah, as, as Larissa said earlier, it's, it's the combination of film and theater. It's like immersive yeah. theater, almost. Yeah, absolutely. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. And something that I, I find is, is incredibly interesting is the writing process that, that writers go through. Would you mind just elaborating upon, because I, I feel it's, it's, it's unique, and, and you're laughing about it. Why is that? Because <laughs> it's frightening. Right, <laughs> really? yeah. You know, and, it's really? and it's lonely. And I think the, the thing that playwrights, I think, love about the rehearsal process and getting, or getting the new play like in a room with people around a table and talking about it is that you actually get out of your own head. Mm. And you actually have, because you're spending countless uh, hundreds of hours trying to figure something out in your own head and having this complete vision. And then you have, have to expose it and expose yourself and your vulnerabilities. Yeah. And um, and yet that can be really great because it, you know, two heads are better than one, five heads are better than one. Once you get the actors and the director involved in it, it's actually really great. Yeah, I'm actually struggling with that right now. My play <laughs> isn't actually really? done yet. Really? I mean, I know what I'm writing about, <laughs> and it has a sort of beginning, middle, and end. So but it'll, it'll be surprising because you don't even know how. It will right, <laughs> right, and and uh, people from from chalk uh, are helping me and giving me notes on the play and mm -hmm. telling me the the areas that seem to need more attention. And so it's uh, it's really hard. You know, it's really yeah. hard as a writer to write something that's really raw and unfinished and share it with people yeah. and uh, trust that they are giving you feedback without judgment. Yeah, you know? but you must have that, that kind of community at, at, at Shock, I feel. Would you agree? Oh, sure. It's like a, it's, a, it's people who you fully trust yeah. that uh, just care about making the best art possible. Mm -hmm. And any, a, any quick, uh, before the interview ends, we have about one more minute, but any quick advice for any young writers who might be um, struggling with the writing process this early on. I'm sure you saw a lot of writing students here at USC during your time here. So yeah, I advice? would just say write and don't be afraid because it's oh, it's going to be bad and it's going to be it's sort of just but get it out. And I always say to my students, every time I start a play, it feels like the first time I've ever done it. Mm -hmm. I feel like I forget. So if it's your first time, it doesn't matter because you're going to have the same experience I have. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing this for, you know, years. Mm -hmm. Brian, any really quick advice? Write every day. Write every day. Period. And there you have it. We have some <laughs> great plays in the second week, the most important week to look <laughs> out for at the Flash Festival for the Chalk Repertory Theater. Gentlemen, thank you so much yes. again for joining thank us. Thank you. This has been the Monday night episode for See You at USC. My name is Dan Toomey, and as always, thank you for watching. You're watching Trojan Vision. For more of your favorite shows, check us out at trojanvision.com and like us on Facebook.
team to help out with the station. There's HR rep, graphics, busy showrunners, and station operations. The TV manager needs a new assistant, and we welcome her along with a few more. There's programming, equipment, and promotions, and they have much in store. All the managers, we work together to make live TV the best it's ever been. We have many helpful students to assist us. That's the way we all became Trojan Vision. Trojan Vision. Trojan Vision. That's the way we became Trojan.